<laughs> just like rub one out or something? <laughs> yeah, right. God, yeah, I've been jacking up a storm these past few days, Jesus. Uh, oh, yeah. who's your girl, Graham? It's my mom. As you may have already heard, big news is going down in Georgia. Now us here at the New Low know the gravity of this situation, and let me assure you that there will be no jokes here. This is serious business, and we're going to get to the bottom of it right here. So tell us, how did you guys capture Bigfoot? Well, I woke up uh, about 7 o'clock in the morning God as damn I normally rooster always do. Gets up. It's 7 a.m. You don't want to know about the damn rooster? The damn rooster is a goddamn alarm clock. Dermot, let me tell him about making God breakfast. Goddamn clock, go ahead. All right, I made some breakfast. I cooked up some uh, Jimmy Dean sausage. If you don't know, it used to come in a 10-ounce package, but now it comes in a 6-ounce package. So you got to buy two of them. I mean, you try to feed two full-grown men on you one You can't of do it. We Whoa. Always Whoa. How did you guys encounter Bigfoot? Well, we was out like every morning, you know, Bigfoot hunting, you know, every Tuesday, Thursday, and Wednesday. So I had my BLR pistol grip lightweight 30 alt 6 rifle with the walnut finish, of course. I had a big fat lipper. God damn right, he had that big a fat lipper. Apple lip. blend, long cut skull. The best skull there is mm -hmm. in the I morning. Had a big fatty. Oh, yeah. And we were going into the woods looking for big feet, and uh, we saw a few of them as we normally do, but this one was acting real strange like. Strange like? I I, I thought, no, no, I knew that he was probably still in car stereos and my hubcaps. So uh, what we did is we chased him down and we said, stop running, nigger. Wait, what? Well, let me tell you something, all right? The great state of Georgia. Great state of Georgia. Stipulates that if you see someone acting a little crazy, no matter what ethnicity or species, you can point your gun at them and say, stop running, nigger. And that is grounds to shoot to kill. So let me get this straight. You guys have the height. You have the weight. You have the size of his hands and the size of his feet, but you don't have the body. Come on, guys, where's the body? Oh, we have that body. Ooh. No question about that. It's in the bed of my F-150. Don't tell them that. You can't tell the people on TV that. Well, man, there's lots of f one fifty. I know that, but you can't tell them that's green. You can't tell me you have the green F-150. What the, what the fuck are you talking about? I just want to see the body of Bigfoot. You ain't from around these parts, are you? What the fuck does that have to do with anything? Well, everyone around here knows when you shoot a Bigfoot, you don't tell nobody. Basically, you just found a black guy and shot him and claimed he was Bigfoot. We might have to kill another Bigfoot you keep talking like that. News from somewhere else. This week on News From Somewhere Else, literally somewhere else, the truth is out there, and this time we have the radar scans to prove it. On January 8, 2008, in Stephenville, Texas, first dozens and then hundreds of eyewitnesses, including one police officer and one pilot, all testified to seeing unidentified flying objects in the sky. Now, this is the exact same proof we used to prove things like the Holocaust existed, or that we used to convict people of murder, or other crimes. In addition to this, the Mutual UFO Network, through the Freedom of Information Act, uh, gained access to 2.8 million radar scans of the area during the time in question. And what's interesting is that these radar scans showed this vehicle traveling at 1,900 to 2,100 miles an hour and doing things that humans just don't have the technology to do, like stopping in midair and then turning on a dime. In addition to this, the U.S. Air Force was stonewalling, as usual. At first they said, we had no craft in the area at the time, and then later they said, LOL, JK, just kidding. We, in fact, had a few F-16s flying around on the test flight. The thing is, this craft was no F-16, because it was doing things that F-16s can't do, and it wasn't identified as an F-16 by the eyewitnesses. Us here at the New Low have one extra thought about this. <clears throat> there is now more proof for this unidentified flying object than there is for Graham's existence at this very moment. Now, I'm an eyewitness, if you count me as a credible source. 
and there was no radar tracking him. Now, it would be like if you looked Graham in the face right now and said, you don't exist. How does it make you feel, Graham? It hurts. I'm not gonna lie, it hurts a lot. You hurt Graham's feelings. Motherfucker. From somewhere else. You guys have probably already heard this, but things are going south in Georgia. Hotlanta? Uh, no, it's the one that no one wants to go to. So, so it is Hotlanta? No, like the whole Georgia-Russia thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, Okay. Yeah, so, I, I mean, you guys probably know the basic gist of the situation, and the thing is, we really can't make heads or tails of the whole, the whole affair. Right, we have no eyes down there. I mean, Georgia's saying that Russia's messing with their shit, and Russia's saying, no, we didn't, and then we're going back to Georgia asking what they're saying, Russia's saying, we don't know. I mean, if this was a custody battle, I would just award the child to just some stranger in the courtroom, honestly, with the way things It's a clusterfuck, of... basically. Pretty just much. one big clusterfuck. Now, what's gone on after this is that McCain has come out right away and said, Russia needs to stop. I am up on this issue. I know about it. Russia needs to stop. And that separates him from his opponent, Barack Obama, because Barack Obama was chilling out in Hawaii, sipping a pina colada, and really didn't have enough experience on the issue to make any informative statement. And when he did, he said that he just wants them to work it out themselves, and then his PR people just said, no, no, you gotta, you gotta be decisive. And then after three or four public statements, he said exactly what McCain said. But here's the problem. Americans, for whatever reason, like decisive politicians. I mean, look at George Bush. He Love was him. a decisive president. He decided to do things without asking anybody else, and then did them, consequences be damned. And look where that got us. Right. And the thing is, McCain looks good on this whole issue for exactly the wrong reasons. And what Americans should be thinking about is not, wow, we need to go get involved in some country that really doesn't matter. We should be thinking about, hey, let's fix our roads, our schools, our taxes, right. our healthcare system. Right. Minimum wage? Fucking you name it. Exactly. Ron Paul and other candidates had it right when they stressed the policy of non-intervention. As Graham has said, we have enough problems right now. Fuck Russia. Fuck Georgia. Both of them. Beast of the Beast of the Beast of the Week. This week's beast worked as a Surgeon General under President Clinton before being terminated for her views. Most famously, she claimed that masturbation was a healthy act for children. In addition, she supported research into drug legalization and distributing contraceptives in schools. My favorite quote was when she said, Abstinence-only sexual education is child abuse. Check her out on Wikipedia. Jocelyn Elders.